so well welcome again warm welcome again uh this is the second part of our two-part series conducting meta-analysis of research our Boeing distinguished professor Lucia is still standing by to take us through uh the continuation of the very sweet very juicy part one and uh, we're going to welcome him again. He's already been introduced. And uh, so it's my pleasure to ask him to take on part two of the two-part series of conducting meta-analysis of research. And by the way, I'm sure you're aware that this second part is uh, to wrap up the preliminaries with regard to the theoretical background, the practical aspect of it we will get on saturday at 9 a.m for two hours professor adeshokwe will be walking us through hands-on practicals on how we can conduct meta-analysis of research 9 a.m at time will be almost like 12 midnight so you can see how much he is sacrificing for us as you are sacrificing for us professor adeshokwe god will reward you bountifully so when I invite you to take on the second part, over to you, Professor Adisha Yeah, so over to you. All right, all right sir. Thank you so very much again, uh, distinguished Professor Kebukola, and thanks to everyone for sticking by. Uh, I know this could be boring. We are trying to break a whole um, course we have a whole semester for this here at washington state university and i'm trying to even develop it make a whole year course uh so that we have the advanced uh, meta-analytical work whereby we can do bayesian meta-analysis hlm hierarchical linear modeling meta-analysis uh and so on and so forth so um uh, really packing a whole year thing into um a couple of hours so please bear with me if i'm going too fast um, uh, what can be accomplished uh, 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 with a meta-analysis? We talked about that uh, because we are bringing a ton of studies together. It helps with generalizability. It gives us uh, statistical power. It helps us to identify gaps in research, and it could be a powerful basis for policy making. I did um, a sabbatical at the University of London uh, two years ago. Uh, working with a center there uh, <clears throat> that um, was exclusively devoted to evidence-based systematic reviews and made analytical work because the UK government will approach that center if there's anything they want to do, most things, not all the things, uh, for public policy uh, in the next year or two, they come to the center and say, hey, this is one million pounds. Can you give us uh, the state of evidence on this. So for a year or two, with a team of researchers all over the world, uh, they will conduct a meta-analysis of systematic reviews and uh, be able to present that to the government, which then forms uh, a kind of a basis for making policy. I'm trying to actually, and I worked for an organization when, when I was uh, um, doing my PhD in Canada, Canadian Council on Learning, which does exactly that. I'm trying to do exactly that here in the U.S. now, have an enterprise or an institute that informs the government about, you know, this is the evidence, this is the state of evidence, uh, and then let the government uh, use evidence to inform uh, policy. So meta-analysis is good for all this. I won't go too much into. Then again, to identify gaps in research. For every meta-analysis that I have done or conducted, it not just only provides a landscape of research, it also shows you where there are gaps in research. So um, my, uh, my PhD students know that uh, they don't get a PhD under me without conducting a meta-analysis. It's just a must. <laughs> so it's a two-part series. They conduct a meta-analysis. It tells them the gaps in research, and then they conduct two empirical studies to fill those gaps. It's sure. a model that I was sure. trained under, uh, which, you know, just not only show you the gap, but also gives you an, uh, a program of research to begin to fill some of those gaps. Let's say at the end of completing meta-analysis, you have this table. 
uh, table uh, shows the dependent measure. I'm just taking one variable. You may code for hundreds of variables, but, but this one variable, dependent measure in it, let's say this is a meta analysis of concept map. So for all classroom based studies 16, application test two, studies produced application test, 16 studies used comprehension test, no study had been published that used transfer test. Then in laboratory, 36 comprehension tests, no application test, five transfer tests. If you want to, again, this is just one table of the of, of our variable after completing meta analysis. Where where is the gap in research in with this table? Okay, so we need more classroom-based studies that will examine transfer. Is that not so? Sure. Yes, sir. Because we don't have anything. We need laboratory studies that would look into application tests. So these are some fun things that you can do after completing meta-analysis. And, and uh, the whole debate, there was uh, back in the uh, uh, 50s, 40s, and 50s, uh, Hans Ensign concluded that there was no favorable effect of psychotherapy starting a raging debate. And this is how meta analysis came to be. They had 20 years of evaluation research and hundreds of studies failed to resolve the debate. And in 1978, Jane Glass from, the, um, from Arizona State University statistically aggregated the findings of 375 psychotherapy outcome studies. Jim Glass and his colleague Smith then concluded that psychotherapy did indeed work, and he called this method meta-analysis. That's how, that was how we had uh, meta-analysis. That was the initial effort back in the seventies. Came Jim Glass's house in the College of Education there um, um, uh, at that time. So it, it came out of the social sciences, but then it's been picked up. Uh, extensively across all different places. For this second uh, part two, I really want to focus on the main stages because we had a number of questions on main stages, you know, what are the process, how do you do it? Um, so the, these are the stages of conducting a meta-analysis. First, we identify the research problem that can be addressed through a meta-analysis. Then we develop the selection criteria. On what basis should we include or exclude studies. We search, we retrieve studies, and select studies. It's more like sampling in, in original primary research. Uh, we develop coding guidelines. Um, then we extract information with code, uh, which is more like data collection. Then we also extract what we call effect sizes. And I told you in part one about effects size is the cardinal rallying point of meta-analysis. Uh, whether it's an indifferent effect size or correlational effect size or odds ratio uh, 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 or, or you know, any type of effect size, we need to extract that. If you do not have an effect size, then your review is a systematic review uh, and not a, a meta-analysis. Again, a meta-analysis is a systematic review that has a Size. That's the major difference between the two. And then you statistically analyze the effect size and you write the report. So step one. So we'll go through all these steps. I will go through some of them today. Then the uh, practical ones we do on Saturday at those trees. Uh, you identify a research problem, a research question that can be addressed through the meta-analysis. Remember when I was with you back in August, uh, April, I gave you this um, uh, this slide, criteria for a good research question. A good research question should be feasible, interesting, novel, ethical, relevant. Feasible in the number of subjects. Do you have the number of subjects? Do you have the adequate technical expertise? Is it affordable in terms of time and money? Is this interesting to you as an investigator? Research questions should wake you up in the middle of the night like it has for me today because I enjoy doing meta-analysis. Research mm -hmm. questions should be something, your area of research should be something that will excite you over dinner table with your family 
My kids know what I do. They can tell you, oh, daddy does uh, meta analytical work to inform evidence based policy. Daddy <laughs> does, uh, you know, STEM education. And he does multimedia learning. So your research question should be something that you are proud to talk about. Uh, you can have those three minute elevator speech. If the Minister of Education uh, stops you by the hallway, what are you doing? Research questions should be exciting to you, interesting to you to talk right. about. Be novel. Should extend the work of others. My students come to me sometimes and say, "I have this idea. It it born in in her, in you know what? It, it I, I just dream of this idea. It's in heaven. It came, and I tell them, if this idea is coming from heaven, you better bring it back to life on earth." <laughs> It, 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 it must, you must build on the shoulders of giants. I keep telling you about how uh, my father here, Professor, distinguished Professor Kibu Kola, how I built on his scholarship. In fact, my very first uh, meta analysis on concept map, which was what you read, and by the way, that paper was accepted without any revision. Wow. <laughs> That's it. Back 14 years ago in review of educational research, because we spent extensive amount of time on it. But it was also inspired by <coughs> distinguished professor Kepu Kola's work. He's done extensive work in concept mapping. And when I started reading, I said, wow, it would be nice to synthesize this work. So you must build your work on the shoulders of giants. Don't say that you want to do something that nobody else has ever done. There's nothing like that. There must be your work, even if it doesn't have connection too much in, in education, somebody must have done something in biology, in chemistry, or in one area, so that you can you can extend the work of others, uh, ethical, the human and animal, so the scientific, relevant. So those are really key criteria for developing a research question. And I also told you, I like to do, when you do meta-analysis or reviews, I don't like to do reviews or meta-analysis in areas that the answers are already obvious. No, I like to do meta analysis in areas that the government is panting for answer. Sure. You know, people in policy, the school the principal, vice chancellor, they need answers. So then that work can become so hot and relevant uh, to, to, to stakeholders. So identify a research question that you think can be addressed through a meta-analysis, I would, in the interest of time, I would have you think about that. We might have a question for you in the discussion post that, you know, uh, would address that. So then step two is to develop what we call the inclusion-exclusion criteria or the selection criteria. Again, remember that I said this over and over, we follow the principle of science, it should be objective and replicable. Meta-analysis is not narrative review. Narrative reviews, you can cherry pick. I said it, you don't like my face, you drop my, my study. Or this is more scientific, it's more objective. What are the cardinal tenets of science? Objectivity and, and uh, uh, you know, replicability. So you, you define your selection criteria. It is critical to have an explicit criteria, inclusion, exclusion criteria. You refine the criteria with the literature. Um, you think about different things with those criteria. Do I want to only review studies published in, in, in English? Those are the cultural and linguistic range. Do I, there was a review paper back in, uh, in 2000. This is 2020. Do I need to go back before 2000, year 2000? You think about time frame. Or let's say here in the US, we had the No Child Left Behind Act in 2001. So if you want to do a review on testing, the rule of testing, one question when we did that review, one question that came to me was the time frame. Do we want post No Child Left Behind Act studies on the effect of testing? Then we can say, okay, I'm going to restrict my searches to 2001. Okay, so what type of publications do you want? Do you want only journal papers or you want conference papers and uh, you want to search in great literatures? Those are questions that you need to, that would define what those selection criteria 
uh, will look like. And I, you know, I would encourage you always include uh, not just only journal papers, but also conference papers and, and uh, technical reports as well. <laughs> Do I include or exclude low quality studies? Someone already asked these questions. Being too restrictive may restrict your ability to generalize. Being too inclusive may weaken the confidence that, that can be placed in the findings. So <laughs> it, you've just got to stay in the middle track. Sure. Methodological quality is often in the eye of the beholder. Correct. So the, this this is very crucial because if you as a researcher you are making a call that oh the studies of low quality I would I will remove them reviewers if your paper comes to me or comes to many reviewers we will ask how did you define methodological quality okay so coming back to what I said earlier in part one that's why it's important to have. This is, must be replicable. You must have criteria for studies to be included in this meta-analysis. The study needs to do boom, boom, boom. So you explicate that very clearly. You can make methodological quality a coded variable, a variable that you code for. And you code for it based on specific criteria. If a study reports this, this, and that, then it's I in methodological quality. Anyone can go in and code that and find and, and code exactly the same way as you. So again, uh, uh, it's it's something that you just have to be careful about. Don't just exclude studies because you think oh they might be they might they might be low in quality. You need to search far and wide. Okay. Uh, if significant findings are more likely to be published than non-statistically significant findings. That's why uh, I always encourage people not to restrict their searches to only publish studies because you might be capturing success stories only. But if you extend it to conference papers, if you extend it to other uh, areas, then you are likely to find even non-significant uh, non-statistically significant findings or studies that still speak more broadly to your area of interest. So search far and wide, uh, you need to, as you read, and that's why I asked you, so so sorry for sending that late, uh, sent it uh, over the weekend, a Saturday or so. That's why I asked you to read those two studies briefly so you can get an idea of the process. So you need to identify where am I searching on uh, bibliographic databases. Do you want to do Google internet searches? If you want to do Google, restrict to Google Scholar, not just uh, any any um, um, any uh, Google uh, thing. Um, do you want to you So many times we contact authors that are working in the field. When we did our meta-analysis of concept map, I reached out to distinguished professor Kebu Kola because I know he is an authority in concept mapping in science education in, in the old world. So I reached out to him, I reached out to a number of key authors in that area to say, okay, what has been published? What maybe they even have studies that their students have worked on. Uh, they were able to supply many of those conference programs. You can search through conference programs. They are mostly online now. You know, if I'm looking at concept map, I can search on um, um, ASWE or AERA or APA uh, conferences, uh, dissertations, uh, thesis. There's a database for them. It's called ProQuest Dissertation. Um, all dissertations are uh, presented in North America and some other areas, like maybe Australia or so, or Europe. They are, they are, they are oh. indexed there. Uh, it would be nice. I mean, I would, I would really, really, and I know people like uh, our vice chancellors here, uh, people like distinguished professor people from like, I'll be happy to work with them so that we start moving <coughs> dissertations and thesis from Africa sure. to 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 all these global dissertation exactly. databases too, exactly. so that they can capture the good work exactly. that we are doing in Africa. So so you search on those review articles again 
are there any review articles in this area before? If there, if there was a review article published uh, three years ago, the question is that why do you want to do another review now? <laughs> is it going to is it going to make any impact? So then, and searching of relevant journals, maybe you identify some other relevant journals. We go through what we call as ancestral searches, reading through the reference list to see is there any study here. That, that that might make it so so it's it's you read government reports clearing houses so it's a really really extensive uh, process i've had made analysis that took us four or five years mm. to complete mm. and some of what you are reading now that that made analysis of concept map uh, took took us about two to three years uh, from the day we started to the day we published it so then computerized bibliography is a rapidly changing area. Get to know your local librarian. Um, you know, use white cards. Then you think about how do I want to. So you have your keywords. So you think about keywords. For any articles to be published in any uh, any major journal today, you have to supply the keywords to, to your study. Concept map, knowledge map, node link map or pedagogical agent, multimedia, learning. You know, you need to be familiar with the keywords in that particular area of work. Then you put those keywords in those databases, and we would, we can do a demo of all of this on Saturday. And then it pops up with a list of uh, studies that have been published or, you know, disseminated. And then, um, Step three, search, retriever, and selection of articles. Okay, I think I went ahead of myself. Uh, you try several search criteria to sufficiently capture all available studies. You choose the most parsimonious. For example, which of these is the most parsimonious? In that uh, verbal redundancy study that you read, we got redundancy all. So the use of Boolean expression is also very important. Do you want to use all or and or not? Or no, you know, redundancy of stimulus, redundant star or bisensory stimulus star, verbal redundancy of bisensory stimulus, redundant star and bisensory stimulus star. Okay, so which of these do you think is most parsimonious? I would say B, okay? Because with B, I can capture any studies that have redundant in the keyword. And it says all, oh, or any studies of bisensory stimulus or stimuli or redundant or redundancy or verbal redundancy or verbally redundant you know all of those will be captured by b but will not be captured by a c or d so to me with this example b is the most parsimonious uh, 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 uh you know combination of uh, keywords to search on in different uh databases. So then you identify relevant electronic databases where studies in the area are published. There's a number of data. And for those in education, we have the ERIC of the uh, U.S. Department of Education. Uh, and But they don't just capture only U.S. studies. They capture all education type of studies published anywhere in the world, published in uh, national or international journals, site info, site articles, web of science again digital dissertation abstracts for all dissertations science directs abi for medical field medline it's a database in, in in the medical field so so you must know the databases that house that particular type of work so you are putting those keywords searching on all those databases doing what we call the federated searching and then it's able to generate for you, um, you know, a list of studies that meet those criteria. And if you search concurrently at the same time, it's possible to search for multiple on multiple databases at the same time. Yeah. You are able, depending on the interface that you have, you are able to exclude duplicates because 
The chances are that a particular study may be housed in three, four different databases. So you don't want one study listed three, four, five times. So you can exclude duplicates. I think there are tools uh, there um, online that will do that for you. You can also identify other sources, as I said, and searching and list um, um, unpublished manuscripts. Uh, websites, you can go to the websites of key authors in the area, uh, Google Scholar, you can contact authors directly. I think I said most of this uh, um, already. So, and then the step four <coughs> is to, uh, uh, is about coding. Well, before, so the first, the, 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 even before you code, remember, you put in those keywords on those databases, and then what you have is a list of studies. Yeah. Then the next question is that, how do you go with this? How do you proceed? The first step, the first phase in that, uh, phase A in that uh, coding thing uh, uh, space is to create, I would say, even it could be as simple as Excel sheet or as you do this work more and more, we have, we subscribe to different project management software like Asana. We have different um, uh, uh, software developed in different university. University of London, when I was there, developed a, a powerful software that can work you throughout this process. And we have also developed a number of tools that help too. So but at a very simple level, you can create an Excel sheet that will have study, okay, APA citation of the study, the abstracts, you can export all of those it into an Excel sheet. Okay, so you export everything to an Excel sheet, including the abstract. So it has the abstract, then another column could be include or exclude, yes or no, include, yes or no. Okay, so if yes, include, then you can save the PDF of that particular paper. Then you go to the next one. If exclude, include, no. Then reason for exclusion. That could be another column in your Excel sheet. So you can say, remember you have, you, okay, before that you have to define your selection criteria that this study needs to make, do this. Uh, experimental group needs to do this. Control group needs to do this. It has to be studies published in the, only in English language, and so on and so forth. So, exclude, you can say, I excluded because it did not meet criterion three, sure. okay, or criteria one and two, whatever criteria one, so that you don't keep typing too many words. So, you just have to find what works for you. So, and you keep that massive matrix of database, you keep it. Uh, if there's 2,000 hits at the first or 1,800, you go first through the abstracts of those hits at the first level. An abstract is just like a paragraph, so it's not bad in my experience. If you sit there for eight hours, you can read through 300, 250 to 300 abstracts in one day. So if you have 2,000 hits for a start, that might be eight days of work two weeks of work, so to say, to go through the entire abstract. We've had projects that we had thousands and thousands of, of studies that took us, uh, you know, months to get even through abstracts. Uh, in a large funded project, you want to have two people doing every level of coding. So, and then they need to resolve discrepancies. And if they cannot, then they escalate that to the lead person. Uh, so my students work on different things. And then they, they come to me and say, well, we were able to resolve this, but not this. And then I look at it, and then we make a determination at that point. So you keep that matrix. So those that you plot for inclusion, you then bring them to this step for you develop a coding form, uh, which could then also be in an Excel sheet or SPSS. Uh, the coding form will speak to your research questions. What are the questions you are trying to answer? What kind of variables do you need to extract from each study that will help you extract 
uh, that will help you answer those uh, questions. If it's an extended project, you need to train your coders or writers. Uh, you need to have your consensus method. We develop code book descriptions. Sometimes it could be 10, 20, 30 pages describing 100 variables that we want to code from each article. Uh, we have the number of raters for each of them. We, we determine your rater reliability. Do you want to do alpha or so intracross correlation, uh, coins kappa, which is more stringent? Or do you just want to do percentage agreement? And developing that coded uh, coding uh, book, uh, then you start coding variables. So participant characteristics, you might have five variables that would define the participant. You might have percentage, gender, uh, female uh, in the, in the uh, subject uh, area uh, where the participants are, are they uh, grade uh, primary five students or, uh, you know, uh, you know, primary two uh, students or so on and so forth. You could, all of this, all of those things help answer the question. And, and you know, uh, if you have not had time to read those two papers, read them because they will provide explicit uh, description about what you need to do. Then step five is to extract and calculate effect sizes. So, so you download the PDF. Let me go back to step four. You download the PDF. You have the uh, of the studies that you set up for inclusion, and then you begin to code. We are going to code on Saturday. I mean, I, and I know again we are trying to collapse a whole year course into uh, a few hours. Yeah. But we will code by those trees on Man. Saturday. I will ask you to code uh, the Baba redundancy study. So please, if you have not read that, the one that, I, uh, that uh, our, our father sent to you uh, um, on PDF, Baba redundancy in multimedia learning environment published in the Journal of Educational Psychology, we are going to do some coding that will tell you how we arrived at some of the numbers there. So, and you will see it live. So, so you take those studies that you flagged in your abstract as to be included, you download the PDF, then you now read at the second phase of coding, you read everything. Then you have developed the coding form which could lead you to, I need to code for these 40 variables from each article, or 50 variables from each article in order to answer all the research questions that I need. Then you start reading the entire piece. Uh, so you start reading the PDF of each paper uh, to code for all those 40, 50 variables. So if it says, uh, you know, the, the gender we had, uh, we randomly assigned participants to one or four groups, uh, so the coding variable there might be um, uh, random, uh, where participants randomized or not, yes or no. So if you read a sentence that says, we randomly assign participants to do so, where participants randomized or not, yes. So you flag that and you put that as yes. So, uh, and, you know, we, we, we go through uh, coding forms on Saturday and some analysis. So you code that for uh, each study. Depending on how, ex how extensive your coding form is, we've had projects where we extracted close to 200 variables. Uh, the, 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 uh, the bilingualism meta analysis, I think we are close to 170 or 180 variables that we extracted from each article. We mined <laughs> articles. So it took roughly almost a day of work to code one or two articles. Uh, so between four to five hours for each article. Uh, on the average, some we were able to go through in two, three hours, some took a day, uh, depending on how complex they are. There are also minor projects that, you know, in 30 minutes you can go through and code. Let's say you're only coding for 20 variables, you can go through in like 30 minutes or an hour and code uh, uh, for that. So you have this matrix of, let's say you coded 50 variables and let's say uh, 50 variables, uh, 50 articles met all your selection criteria. So you have a matrix of 50 by 50. In actual fact, you might also even have more because so there are some studies, <coughs> just one particular study 
that we will report multiple experiments. There's a lot of this done in the Journal of Educational Psychology. So, but there's what we call principle of statistical independence in meta analysis. You can't teach participant once. So if a study reported, uh, uh, you know, three experiments. So that study we have three different rows of coding. Each row for each experiment. If a study has um, what we call <coughs> one um, um, control group and two experimental groups, let's say animated concept map and static concept map compared with lecture. So you will code for animated concept map versus lecture separately in one row and static concept map versus lecture in another row. And then we'll get to later into how we combine things uh, together. So the coding process is the donkey job part of better analysis. It could take months or years, but it has to be thorough uh, for publishable pieces. <coughs> you must have double coders. That's why I said you cannot be a selfish person and do a meta analysis. It requires a team of researchers. Now, people are coding. They are resolving discrepancies, and you're keeping track of interreter reliability. Yes, we have five more. We have five more minutes, sir. All right, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So, and then that step five is to extract effect sizes. Effect size quantifies the magnitude of the treatment in experimental studies. They quantify the strength of the rela of relationship in correlational studies. And there are many different types of effect size measures. Each type may have different, but it will be a computational formula. They gone at those days. When I did my first meta analysis, I had to program uh, write syntax in SPSS on how to compute effect sizing using equations from the McLeafsey as a book, uh, Introduction to Meta Analysis. But today, you have tons of different programs that will, all you need to do is put in your, um, your experimental group name, control group name, and the computer will give you the effect size. You have different types of effect size measures like the standardized mean difference, correlational coefficient, predictive relationship, odds ratio, risk ratio, proportion, standardized gain scores. <clears throat> but here is one thing. You need to choose an index of effect size and apply that throughout the study. So you cannot uh, report the, the <clears throat> an effect, a correlational effect size uh, in one for one study and report a mean difference effect size for another study. You have to look at which effect size is more dominant or prevalent. And then there is conversion formula for converting one effect size to the other. So if mean difference is more dominant uh, in your distribution of studies, you then have to, if there's a couple of studies that have reported correlational effect size, you have to convert that to mean difference uh, effect sizes. <clears throat> There's weightings. We weight studies. We weight studies based on sample size. So a study that has 1,000 participants will contribute more weight to the meta-analytical model than a study that has 20 participants. And it makes sense. It does. They are not <laughs> the same. So, but again, the effects, they, all the effect sizes have to be on the same metrics. One effect size can be converted to another. There are several useful effect size conversion equations. Uh, we can convert R to D, D to R, and so on and so forth. Or uh, odds ratio, uh, risk ratio. <clears throat> I have these PowerPoints uh, which uh, uh, can be shared with you. Um, and then, hopefully, if time permits, uh, Saturday we can uh, look through some and examples, ask you to. Uh, and do some uh, example. <clears throat> meta analysis can be really daunting in terms of equation. You pick up a, an introductory meta analytic book, it could have 1,000 different equations. So I, I would really encourage you not to bother yourself um, with those equations. I only talk about equation to think about the theory that undergird this type of work. Exactly. Uh, but there are, um, there are tools, computational tools, <clears throat> that actually help us uh, deal with um, all those equations. There, as you can see, them are blazing through now, gain score and cover, uh, two-way, ANOVA, and so on and so forth. Um, so
So, and then you have the a, a example meta analysis of concept map, which I ask you to read. Uh, again, I won't go too much into this in the interest of time. Uh, and then um, the meta analysis on, I mean, this is really interesting. Uh, we had the other 2006 meta analysis, as you can see, when people construct concept map in Africa, we had an overall weighted mean effect size of 1.45. And by the way, if you use Jacob Cohen's rule, when an effect size starts reaching about 0 0.7, 0 0.8, that's pretty large. In Africa, we have 1.45, and most of those were conducted by a distinguished professor of cable color. Uh, this is powerful for Africa. Uh, and I would say, really, really give a word out to Africa today that we should be uh, uh, including more of these constructive type of uh, learning strategies in the way we learn. And distinguished professor will collaborate the trail for us, and we need to start building on this generative constructive activity, uh, particularly in the con great continent of, of Africa. And then, you know, uh, some other things here about that meta analysis. And uh, I also ask you to read verbal redundancies, which we will talk about. Uh, but verbal redundancies, they are all around us. Read along books if you are familiar with them. A presenter speaking over slides, like I am doing now, there's verbal redundancy going on. Instructional television programs with closed captions. You read, you watch a Korean movie, but they yeah. have English yeah. subtitles. Yes. And those are there's verbal redundancy in terms of cognitive processes sure. that go on. We ask some key questions there, and uh, um, you know, maybe uh, Saturday I can walk you through uh, this example um, that you saw in that paper. And we had some uh, findings uh, there. Um, thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so very much. Our born distinguished professor, Olusola Adesokwe, we can't thank you enough. Uh, you may wish to stop sharing your screen so that uh, uh, we will have a feel of uh, the class. So I'm going to open up the class now for comments and questions, uh, knowing that on Saturday will be uh, day of getting our hands onto it, getting practical part of uh, meta analysis. So the floor is open for students and uh, others. Uh, let me see who is taking the floor. Yeah. So if you want to take the floor, please. Just raise your hand or you or mute yourself and let us know. Uh, Joseph, are you? Okay. Uh, I think you all have benefited tremendously from this meta analysis thing. And uh, you are prepared, all of you are prepared to engage yourself in using the tool or technique in your research. Fethibu, uh, so I'm going to ask a few questions now. Fethibu, what are you working on? What are you, what's your project on? Um, it's on um, the effect of CTCA on yes. mathematical retention in secondary school students. Oh, very nice. In elementary Okay, fine. If you are going to do a meta-analysis of uh, methods uh, that have impacted on mathematics, mathematics achievement of students, how do you intend to progress? Uh, noting some few salient things that Professor Adeshokwe mentioned. Distinguished for the information. One is that you are not just throwing your net into a sea of literature. You want to be clear headed that this is an area that uh, you believe is important for us to provide an answer, an area that uh, not well treaded. So, maths is such an area. So, I'm quite excited about, your, about what you want to do because mathematics, I can see Professor. Uh, Bayo Mearibabu here, 
our district, our wonderful vice chancellor from Taishudari University of Education, a mathematician, by salon and math <laughs> mathematics. Uh, yes. He, yes, sir. So he, he, they, they are the people that we want. We want many more people to learn math, but they are not. So if you are conducting a meta analysis of methods that have worked or not worked in improving uh, performance, if you like achievement of students in mathematics, how will you progress? Faith Igbo, you still have the floor. All right, sir. Uh, um, I would first and foremost look at the works of um, people that have worked on that area. Uh, no, how will you get? How will you get those? You see, he gave us Professor Dijakwe gave us the step by step. Okay, so you are looking for literature in that area. How will you get that literature? Okay, yes, I would go online. I could um um I I would check online. I'll Google on for journals on that, and then um, most likely I will join bodies that um I don't know if I'm using the right term. Um um I'll go online and search on it and and join bodies that have already worked on that. All right, that's Am your that's uh, one of the steps of uh, of six or five steps so let's assume you are, you are close to it but there are quite a lot of other ways in which you will get the relevant literature. okay he also assume talks you, about you, assume you have now you you now have the literature you now have aggregated you have, you have delimited your your the, the, the you have given the boundaries uh to which you go to capture the literature for the literature so what are you going to do next madam he also said, um, we eh, not he also them. said, though, not he also said, no, you also said, tell us what you're going to do, not he also said, Bugoma, you take okay. the floor, Bugoma, take the floor, Bugoma from Morocco. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Okay, so me, I'm, uh, I'm working on uh, regional integration and pet development. Good, if I want to do a meta analysis. First, I will go online. Yeah. I will look. Uh, I will, I will start by this, uh, for example, Google Scholar. Yeah. And I'll put keywords. Good. For example, regional integration. Excellent. I put the series and then I put it uh, trade. Excellent. You can see I'm clapping for you. Excellent. Go ahead. Yes. And then after that, I will see all the study uh, studies which have been done conducted in this area but i will also uh, after looking on those studies before i go to the next step i'll look on other uh, database for good. example the world of science good and then after that i may even go in in google in that uh, um, the simple google and i put the keyword to look if there are others maybe journals or other all right um, okay now you have got your have oh that's fine that's step one okay fine so next step is what okay now i'm um, first one so if i have all those studies now i will look how can i how can i know what, what studies i really want for my 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 my, my study okay after that i will have to make this uh, 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 uh criteria selection exactly of which study do exactly. i need exactly. for my study yeah, before you go on, I'd like to let uh, Professor Adesha know that uh, in this class, we is a, you know we have students from all, you can see she's in the social sciences. We have uh, in education, STEM education, we have in law, we have in pure science, like David is a mathematician, uh, Freda Wai is, a, is public administration, you know, and uh, so they are diverse. And what we want to move on to do now is to Ibukunolu Ademola, so, okay, you now have your, you, you, you use the selection criteria, you now have inside the pot, inside the pot, all those uh, resources that you want to meta-analyze. You have from thesis, you have from manuscripts that have not been published, you have from conference proceedings and all that. So, Adibola, what's the next step? Yes, sir. Yeah. The next thing is to now look at those articles that that are already extracted and then see those ones that 
I've been able to meet up with those criteria that I've set uh, listed earlier. Very good. So, and then I will filter them and then see the ones that, that I want. Then the next thing is to now look at them one after the other and see those that have all the content, the effect size. I, I will have to determine the effect size. Yeah. And um, the next thing now is to now review the, do a systematic, uh, sorry, to consider the effect size of all, all those articles after featuring them for the first phase and second phase before I can now move on to do the coding of uh, those uh, articles. Oh, wonderful. So let's go to another job. Another job, how do you code? Oh, David, okay, David, over to you, David. David's in DRC. David, take the floor. Yes, Professor, thank you for the floor. Uh, I can see that uh, in conducting meta-analysis, it can't be randomly selected because when we fix a criterion for selection at the step two, sure. that is a, according to your title of your thesis. Yes. So there is no random randomly selected we can do. Sure. The second observation is when we can meet, we have selected all the papers according to your thesis. Yeah. In the references, we can meet other titles exactly which can which can yeah. be connected at your thesis. Yes. And we can check the wonderful, those papers. Wonderful. Well yes. done, well done. You can see, Professor Olisola, you can see we have the best doctoral students in Africa here. You can see how brilliant, you know, they, this is quite, uh, quite, quite exciting. Ibuko, you raise your hand, but I'm going to go on to uh, somebody else now. Uh, Jack, uh, let's see. Uh, Messi Ibe, you kept coming in and out. Messi Ibe, are you asleep or you are awake? Now, Kunle uh, Olade, just so take the floor. That's next step. We have coded. And in fact, in coding, how do, how do you do the coding? Do you do it alone? Do you do it in league with others? And if in league with others, how do you ensure that code out A, B, C, D are doing the, are doing, uh, they, 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 they are reliably doing the same thing? Yes? What are they doing? Very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, the coding seems to be like the most epic part of that um, process. Is that you see you know that there are different um, ways by which you can ensure that your coding is reliable. You use the example of the Kepa. So you must have which one you want to use to form the coding. Now you must uh, uh, um, you need to employ the services of others to support you. You can't do it alone because it takes time. Now, how do you ensure that there's entire reliability? What Ademola is coding is the same thing as what Kunle is coding based on the criterion that has been that has been given. Once the coding is done and everything is in order, then the next the next step will now be to analyze, to look for the overall effect size. So to see that what you have done is actually what's right, then you now give your report. All right, that's very good. As I as we close before I yield to our Boeing distinguished professor, if you do all of that, you know we use the mathematics example. Uh, I was not found that the effects. See, the government of Nigeria is telling Professor Eric Babu that look, 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 this mass thing, we've got to break the backbone now. Which method do you think will uh, be the one we can sign on uh, to use in training our teachers, that mass teachers want to give you training uh, the next two long vacations and uh, we want the methods? And they tell Professor Eric Babu, look, you people now, wake up, take a uh, uh, 10 million naira, do this uh, research for us. And Professor Arik Babu now engages Feti Bu and all the other mathematicians, and they'll get all the data and they do the meta analysis. Okay. So, what will be the product of this meta analysis, and how will it influence policy? How, how, how will you then tell government, you know, Feti Bu, I'm coming back to you because you are the, you are, we are helping you uh, to solve your mathematics problem. So, what will be the final product of your research that government of Nigeria, you know, uh, the point distinguished professor talking about Minister of Education, I will take to Minister of Education, thank you for a 10 million naira, this night they put a dividend of your 10 million naira for training the teachers. Yes, Fetibu, quickly, 
we have three minutes to round up this session. Sorry, Professor. Please, can you make your question more specific? I cannot. I uh, if, we go, if we go take the floor, you know, when you can't answer something, begin to dodge, which can make it specific. How, how many no, specific? okay, let me. No, let no, me, no, don't me, worry. Don't me. worry, Petibo. Uh, if we can take the floor. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. It will, at the end of the day, help the <laughs> government to, it will open the height of the government to see probably uh, those work that have been done before were unable to, uh, to, to expatiate more on some issues. With meta-analysis, because I'm looking at different work that have been done by different kind of people. So I'll be able to extract their results together and reanalyze. And that will help the government to actually use this to solve. Okay, that's right. What are you going to tell government? See, government is looking for government is looking for a method to, to train all the teachers of mathematics, geopolitical workshops in geopolitical zones. They want to do workshops for those say, look, this is a method that research has shown, research conducted in Nigeria for Nigerian students, that there are about 10 different methods that are used. And uh, so which method, which of which two or three methods can we use to train our mass teachers? So if we can conclude with that, or uh, let me just uh, take on yes, Fatih Bo. No, no, Fatih Bo, maybe you now have appreciated my question. So round up, round up very quickly. Okay, she's not active yet. Uh, if we can take the floor. Yes, sir. So at the end of the day, I can now come out to tell the government that I've been able, uh, after the uh, meta-analysis that I've conducted, I've been able to ob I observe that uh, demonstration method, collaborative method, are uh, the method that can be used to teach mathematics effectively. Exactly. So that's it. See, that, that, that was why Professor Ade, the Boeing Distinguished Professor Ade Shokwe's paper on bilingualism. You know, like Nigeria, for instance, just English, English as our, uh, our lingua franca. And uh, maybe Nigeria wants to take one, one of that subject and uh, one other language, like French. So that's why the review of educational research paper by Professor Adeshokwe came out strong because it would depend on it. It's driven by empiricism. It's driven by, you know, work done by multiplicity of others, not only him, doing one study in one corner in, a, in a, a, a Washington State. But every part of the U.S., so it's like all the tongues of all these people rolled into his to now tell the world, tell government of the U.S. that this is the way to go. So that is the that is the merit, that is one of the cardinal benefits or dividends of meta analysis. And as I mentioned to you all, uh, you must, as part of your master's and doctoral studies. We don't just to see your chapter two literature review, just uh, make it just quantitative. We find it just cherry pick as a person, so that they where I said, uh, say that Bukoma has found this, uh, Jacques uh, Mazambi has found this, this has found this, these are differences, and this has just stopped there. No, no, no. You got to conduct a meta analysis. Your thesis will not be approved though if you don't do meta analysis, no matter the crudest form. So Saturday is a day, is a day. It's a day, not so, Professor Michael Hoover. Saturday, Michael Hoover. I say Saturday. Saturday is, yeah. It's a day of action. It's a day of action. So, all of you, it's a workshop. Oh, so, bring your hammer, bring your nail. What are those things you bring for workshop? You bring your, your uh, pliers and all that to the workshop because you are going to learn from the master. You are going to learn at the feet of the master. So, I give uh, Professor. Uh, Boeing distinguished professor a minute to just round up quickly because we'll we've overrun our time. And after after that, I'm going to ask uh uh let me see you because we are getting students to present plaques now to our uh, our professors. Uh let's see now. Uh I'm going to ask uh, Fred Awa from Ghana uh to present our, our appreciation plaque to Professor Adeshokwe when he wraps up in one minute. Over to you, sir, Professor Adeshokwe. Okay. Thank, thank you so very much, uh, distinguished Professor Kebukola, my academic mentor and father. Uh, at many levels, um, 
I want to say thanks to God and thanks to each and every one of you uh, for making our time to be here today. So I was going through this. Um, I was very close to tears um, because I wish I wish I had something like this, like you are having now. This is truly the best I've gone through uh, your curriculum. And I tell you, um, it's probably about the best that you can have anywhere in the world. Wow. Even our PhD students here, that their curriculum is not as rigorous as what you have. You have a collection of um, excellent, excellent leaders, vice chancellors, uh, uh, reputable um, researchers around the world come together and policy makers uh, to run this class under the direction of uh, distinguished professor Kezi Kola. You are actually having the best of the best around the world and I don't know anywhere in the world where we have something like this. I hope you can take good advantage of this opportunity. I already can see that. Uh, thank you so very much and uh, I think there's hope for Africa. Oh yes. oh, yes. There's hope. With you, I see a lot of hope. I see good governance. I see promises. I see potentials in Africa. Thank you. Thank God you please. so very much. We're also moved to tears by your very kind words, uh, our born distinguished professor, Olishola Adeshokwe. My, my pleasure to invite one of our students uh, uh, Fatih Bo, are you there? Make this presentation on our behalf. Yeah. All right, sir. It's a pleasure to do it. Um, on behalf of um, Lagos State University, African Center of Excellence for Innovative and Transformative STEM Education, is it is a World Bank project. This is to certify that going distinguished professor. Ulushola Adeshope facilitated courses ACE811 and ACE911 within the period of June 8 to 13, 2020. Signed, Distinguished Professor Peter Okebukola, OFR Director. We are very thank we are very grateful and thankful, sir. Thank you very much, Professor. Thank you so very much. So let us all together give a round of applause to our Boeing Distinguished Professor. We will thoroughly enjoy this and we look forward to see you on Saturday. Do not forget, dear, dear uh, esteemed class, do not forget when you are the acknowledgement part of your thesis, acknowledgement, you have to put Ulisola Adishakwe there because you are going to have meta-analysis in the thesis, so his name has to feature in your thesis. Once again, thank you all very much, and uh, we hope to see you on Saturday. Bye-bye now.